The readings of today are so important for all of us who are Christians. Already in the Old Testament, we see in the life of this holy man, Job, that God allowed Satan to, te to test him, and he lost everything. He lost his family, all his children, everything he owned, and his health was affected. In the end, when he was asking God, why did you allow me to be born? The answer that God gave him is similar to the answer that Jesus gave to his disciples. Jesus, the Lord said to Job, when you try to peer into heaven, the depth will dazzle you. I am the one who created the stars. I'm the creator of all that exists. In my hand, it is to restore what has been lost. In the gospel reading of today, we see the fulfillment of what we read already in the Old Testament. For example, in the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter seven, if we read from verse 14, the prophet says, this is the sign the virgin is with child, and will give birth to a son, and his name will be Emmanuel. God is with us. That God is with us is the one who was born of the Virgin Mary. And he is the one in the boat. And the winds of this world, the challenges of this world hit the boats of the disciples. And they woke Jesus who was sleeping. And instead of saying, I'm sorry I was sleeping, he said, what is wrong with you people? Have you no faith? Have you no faith? It is not that the disciples woke him that gives me the challenge. It is the question he asks them. Have you no faith until now? Have you no faith? Why do you doubt? The church is always represented with a boat, the drawing of a boat, which tells us that like those disciples of Jesus, we are always trying to sail on the waters of this world. And as we move, we face challenges after, after challenges. It didn't start today. This has been with the church from the very beginning. Challenges from those who don't believe in God. Challenges from those who worship Satan. Challenges from those who have horrible ideologies. Challenges with those who just hate us. But in all these challenges, we see them as the wind blowing against our boat. And I agree with Pope Benedict XVI when he says that the boat of the church can never sink because Jesus is in it, even if it has collected much water. That is true. Why? Because Jesus, as we read in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, is always with us. He says, I am with you always to the close of the age. This lesson was understood by St. Paul that is why in the second reading of today, he tells us very clearly that those who are in Christ Jesus are a new creation, new creatures. As new creatures, their way of reasoning is different. Their way of understanding the meaning of life is different. Because they know this principle that the love of Christ overwhelms them. When I was battling with my call to become a priest, I didn't want to be a priest. I never wanted to be a priest. I wanted to be a medical doctor and possibly also a lawyer. But the Lord arrested me. He wanted me to do what he wanted. I, I wrestled. But then when he made me to read this passage, when I saw this word, the love of Christ overwhelms us. I was totally taken, I was overwhelmed by these very words. And that's when I said, yes, 
I will serve. St. Paul says, the love of Christ overwhelms us because if one man has died, then all of us should die for the, one, for the sake of the one who gave his life. What does it mean to die? It is to become less so that Christ will become more in my life. It is to cast throw away my own ideas and allow the principles and ideas of Christ to guide my life. It is to stop thinking like the people around me and start thinking like the one who lives inside me. It is to allow Christ to drive me. It is to allow Christ to be my guide. As another translation has it, the love of Christ compels us. My dear brothers and sisters, the boat of the church will never sink. Never mind what journalists and people commentators may say. And the boat of the small church, the nuclear church, your family will not sink either. Because Jesus is present. When we have challenges in our lives, we must not seek the help of those who will encourage us to divorce one another. We should not seek the help of those who will tell us that the family has evolved and we should forget about living together. We should listen to the voice of one who tells us, why do you doubt? We should listen to the voice of Pope Benedict who tells us that the boat will never sink even if it has gathered much water. Your place of work may be the boat. And in the place of work, you face challenges every day. You face persecutions. Clear persecutions, but also subtle persecutions. Because you are a Catholic. Remember, Christ is in the boat, and it will never sink. Whatever be your condition, are you suffering from ill health? Remember that Christ is in the boat and that boat will never sink. So I ask the Holy Spirit today to make us understand that even in the Old Testament in Psalm number 139, the psalmist tells us about how God is with us all the time. That we accept and acknowledge and allow it to become our way of life. This understanding that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, and that since he's in the boat, the boat will never sink. If we understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are nourished by the food that he gives us to continue the Holy Eucharist, then we who are Christians will be the most confident of all people because we know that he is Emmanuel and he is with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.